chat, we have a panel of teen high schoolers um, that are gracious enough to come on the show and we talk about a topic and we have a nice little round table type discussion about certain issues. And today's issues we decided to talk about is video games, the effects of video games and the violence of those games. Um, how that affects kids, um, how they're perceived in the world, and even what the parents' interactions and what the parents feel about that from the kids' perspective, teenagers' perspective. Great. Well, let me introduce you to my um, panel of guests today. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming with us today and joining us. Um, today, our panel is we have Edward, um, junior in high school. Sophomore. Sophomore in high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have El Nathan, freshman. Uh, we have Tressa, freshman in high school. And we have Maite, uh, who is a senior. Junior. Junior. Okay, yeah. I just said both of you guys almost graduated early. Okay. <laughs> so today's topic is going to be about the effects of video games. Um, just recently, we just had um, a, one of the parents gave me an article about there was a game that um, leads to, at the end, suicidal uh, murder and violence. And I know there's also those games out like Grand Theft Auto. I want to hear from kids. Are these video games actually inducing violence or trauma or anxiety? What are your opinions on these video games and the violence on them? Who wants to open up the discussion? I'll go. Okay. Well, I personally think that it's up to the player or the person, whoever's doing that, to let it affect them. Like things like Mortal Kombat or GTA, mm -hmm. you gotta be able to distinguish the difference between reality and a video game? Well, I mean, uh, I know you need to, but do you guys really, though? All the violence we have out in this world, do you really do? Yeah, we definitely do. Like, you don't go just stealing cars. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of violence lately and around, and a lot of kids, like I hate to say it, the shootings, the school shootings. Mm -hmm. A lot of the school shootings, what did the kids say? They played those video games to learn how to shoot. They didn't go out on the range with mom and dad. They wind up learning from a video game. How many of you guys even play those shooter games? Oh, you all do. <laughs> okay, mm. you all do. <laughs> Let's get a girl's perspective. What do you think? Um, I think that it depends on, like, you know, like, I think that it, you can let it affect you, but you have to realize that if you do let it affect you, then you have consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. Like, if you play a shooting game, then you have to know if you go out in the world and you shoot somebody, that you will be arrested. Because every action that you do has a consequence. That's just how I feel. Like, if you play a game, you should know what the effect is going to be after you do what you do. But who actually watches and pays attention and teaches the kids that that's not the case? I remember a little while back, there was a student, I think it was like 10 years old. He did some wrestling move that he saw in a video game on a little girl and wind up killing her. So what ages, what ages did you guys even start playing these video games of violence to them? Um, well, me, um, I started playing, uh, um, I guess you could say violent video games when I was four. Um, my dad. Four? Yes, four. <laughs> so, yeah. So I was playing the first couple Call of Duties, um, Sly Cooper, games like that. Uh, and my dad taught me from a young age that don't forget it's just a game. Don't let it get to you. Like, he saw that if I got mad or frustrated at a game, then he would take the game away from me. So that way I can have time to realize that the game is not real life. Me and the game world and the real world are two separate things and there's nothing linking them besides me if I let them. Do you think, oh Nathan, do you think that, I know you said you got angry, do you think the violence in the video game provoked your anger or just what? It was the challenge because me, I'm very competitive, so as a competitive person, I kind of want to get over every challenge, but some challenges are harder than others, so I might get frustrated and get angry. So that's why my dad took the game away from me, 
because because he said I was getting way too in depth into the game, and to be honest, now that I look back on, it, I kind of thank him for it. You you kind of get absorbed in these games because it's competition for one, and I hate to say it, you're in a game that. You know, if you're in a shooting game, the more kills you get, the higher you win, the higher your score. So you're kind of more wanting to get it. Do you think that kind of grabs a hold of you at all? Um, well, I started playing games because I have an older brother. Mm -hmm. So I just like seen him playing since because when we were young, we had the PS2. So I just seen him play games, video games, and then you just, I sometimes see him get angry or frustrated because it's the final boss scene and you're just trying to defeat the boss and then he loses and it's just, you can just see him frustrated because it doesn't work out, he lost. But also like video games, there's other times where it can be a violent game for younger kids, but it can also be something of Guitar Hero, also the same thing. If you just, if you're playing the song with your guitar and you miss a note, you get frustrated because you missed a note, so that's what, yeah. Well, I understand, like, there's Guitar Hero. There's also other games. Like, when I was a kid, there was Pac-Man. Mm. Okay, uh, yeah, you guys are probably always laughing at that. That was our excitement. We had Pac-Man. We had Donkey Kong dropping barrels on people's heads. Yes, that was still violent, but, you know, that's what we had. But these video games now, they're so realistic. They're like you're watching a movie. I mean, it's like you're actually seeing a person, and I think some of those games, can't you kind of put your own image in there, too? When you're doing the shooting game, yeah, or you mm -hmm. you can put your own image in there. Right, like if you want to, because um, I know some games you can customize the character, and mm -hmm. it's like it's mm -hmm. your choice if you want to customize the character to look like you if you want to. Mm -hmm. Usually, I prefer not to. I usually prefer to customize my character to look of the game. Cause you think, do you think for some people they get obsessed with those games that it becomes them and their personality or? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. Yes. Yeah. Like I know a couple people, for example, when Fortnite came out, they dropped out like all summer sports and he, some of them even quit their job <laughs> just to play Fortnite and be like, oh, I'm the best builder. It's like, dude. Wow. Yeah. Like some okay. people can get way too absorbed in these silly little video games and yeah. it's, it's disturbing. You see, that's where I'm saying it. So where do we draw the line at? And who buys these video games? Are, are most of the games that are really violent, say, mature? Mm -hmm. or yeah. 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 Yeah, they do have labels on them. But, like, yeah. the parents will, like, buy them for you, mm -hmm. and you'll just, like, play the game. Because I remember um, I was used to be, like, under 13, under 17, or whatever, and it used to say, like, oh, this is rated 17 and plus, but I'll still play the game. I was still... <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, I'll still play the game, but mm. it didn't really affect any of my real life because my dad taught me from a young age not to let that affect you. Okay. Because, like, I know um, one of the parents, like I said, it gave me an article. There's a game, and I we spoke before the show. Um, there's a game called Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, I haven't mm -hmm. heard of most of these games besides, like, Call of Duty that, you know, nieces and nephews ask for a gift. I've never even heard of any of these games. But when that one particular game and the end, I guess it in the people in the game or the characters either commit suicide or murder, how does that affect things? Like I was talking to a friend of mine and her 10 year old actually knew about the game. So at what point are these games safe enough for kids that it's not gonna influence you? Well, I just feel like if you're making a game, you have to know like what you're putting in the game might affect a kid out there. So you have to be careful what you put into like your game. Like if you're gonna put like violence in it, you have to make sure that it's not too explicit or it's too much to where it gets to a point where like the kid gets influenced by it. And like if you're gonna make a game then you have to make it appropriate for the age that you're like making it for. So like if you're making, like if you were targeting like 10 year olds and up, then you would make it non-violent, less violent. If, but if you're making it for like more mature kids, like 17, 18, and, like 20 year olds, then like that's a different story. Like they, like you put violence in there, but it's, it's still like, I'm not saying that 20 year olds can't go out and you know, kill people, 
but it's like little kids they don't know what they're doing like they're more like less mature yeah. than like 20 year olds like they just think like oh i'm killing somebody like that's not wrong like you know they just do it to have fun they think they're having fun and it's not wrong but you know they don't really think about like oh this i'm actually killing a person like this is wrong this is like violent i can't i shouldn't be doing this it's like we've all heard of like kids um picking up guns and shooting their family members by accident things like that not realizing it. Do you think a lot of that stems from the video games? I yes. think, mm -hmm. like, not just the video games, but everything on the media and the industry, like TV shows, like movies, because kids are more for, like, when I was growing up, like Beyblade and Bakugan, kids would go crazy about that, like, wanting to be a character mm -hmm. or, like, wanting to be able to do what they did. I still think that plays a big contribution into like today's society and kids. So with me, I feel like it isn't the games. I feel like it's the parents. Like you know, Ooh. like I feel like you know how mature your kid is, and you mm -hmm. should be letting your kid know the difference between the reality and the video game. Mm -hmm. You should be able to let your kid know that in real life you don't respond. In real life you just don't get away with murder. You will get arrested. There are consequences for your actions. And that person that you killed is never coming back. And show them that in real life, guns are not a joke. They're not something to be played with. You gotta respect the gun. So, we're gonna kind of put it all back on the parents, which have to make sense, because not most of you guys have enough money to go buy these <laughs> PS4s and this Xbox One and the 360, because they're pretty expensive games. So. As parents, do you think anything has to do like the schools? Do you think the schools should intervene and start talking to kids about um, the video games and the importance of knowing the deciphering between what's reality, what isn't? I know like Grand Theft Auto is very, very um, um, explicit, to put it nicely, on things that they do and the stealing cars and behavior-wise. Do you think even any of that should fall back in teachers or the schools to at least educate students on? I feel like this. I feel like there should be a point where you should be able to teach the kids that it's not a joke, like I said before. But don't get too into it, cause you still, cause you, cause the parents still have to do their job. Like the school can't do everything that the parents could, cause most of the problems that happen with the kid do stem from home. So the parents are going to have to work with the child more than the school has to. But I do feel like the school should probably educate the kid a little bit. They should educate the school a little bit. Now, what do you think about, like, the labels for the games? The labels? Like, yeah. Like, uh, are those actually really good range, like the 17 plus, 13 plus? Do you think those need to be modified with the government, like, to regulate that better? Well, I think... If it's for E for Everyone, you know it's going to be something for kids, like Mario Mario mm -hmm. Kart, you know that because it's not really violent, it's, not, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's more just people racing and just that. But I feel like if you are selling something and putting something of M17 plus mature, you should know that there are risks, that, that they may have older brothers or sisters and that they may also buy them for their younger mm -hmm. brother because, oh, I wanted it so much, but I didn't get it for my birthday, could you buy it for me? So I just think that they can also have a gateway of getting those games, even though it's labeled mature. Okay. So actually then, thinking about like the age groups, you guys are all 17 and under. Do you really, what actually classifies as mature? Isn't shooting a gun, even if it's a mock gun on a game, isn't that should be over 17, but you guys are all playing them. Mm, you can have a gun permit at like 13 and go hunting. Yeah, you can. You can also enlist in the military at like 17, 16. Right. Okay. Go on reserves. So, I mean, it just depends on the person. Like, I know some people can't handle, like, violence as well as others. Mm -hmm. So, when you're saying about, like, the government, like, ratings, it just all depends on the person. Yeah, cause, uh, cause I remember I was at school. I used to watch all the same stuff that everybody mm -hmm. else did, like uh, mm -hmm. the Last Airbender and all that other stuff. Um, 
and I wasn't going down the hallways doing kamehamehas or trying to bend the waters from the water fountains like <laughs> <laughs> like it's like it just all depends on the maturity of the mm -hmm. person like the ratings shouldn't really matter like I'm not saying that they don't have worth like they do have a good view on how old you should be to be playing this but I still a feel like it just area. Yeah, but I feel, but I still do feel like it's more on your mental maturity. Mental maturity. Okay. Now, I know like we were talking about what things have happened in the news. Um, I don't know the particular name of the game, but I know there was a game that uh, a few years ago, these girls decided to go and hurt another girl to please the character in the game. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it was the Slenderman mm -hmm. game. Okay. So it's called Slenderman the Seven Pages. Pretty much mm -hmm. the goal of the game, you had to find the seven pages and not let Slenderman kill you or whatever. And um, so pretty much the girls, they were trying to like please Slenderman because they didn't like want them to like kill them or whatever. They just wanted to like please them. So they ended up stabbing the girl like 24 times. So what do you think about that? I mean, this is still violence in the game and this game is inciting it. Should we go after those gamers or not, I mean, the game producers that are doing this to get the stuff off the market? Or do you think that game is acceptable if you're mature to know, okay, you don't have to really please this fictional character or do anything violent. It's nothing's going to happen. You shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about something like that? Because, like, because the main question that I'm thinking mm -hmm. is where is the parent in all of this? Like, not, like okay. I know it sounds like I'm trying to throw everything on the <laughs> parents, <laughs> but, it, but, but it's still, like, a major key factor. Mm -hmm. Like, then, like, you should be able to notice this erratic behavior in your child like, like, you should know what your right. kid is watching to an extent. I'm not saying be all up in their business, looking over the shoulder all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you should keep a decent watch over your kids to know whether something's changed in their behavior or whether they're okay. acting erratically. That makes sense. I can add to that. Go ahead, Eddie. With maturity, you know, and stuff like that, you know, how those people are like, you know, give me your insurance number and your social security you know and I'll add a million dollars to your account it's like the same thing with this like fake promises and games and stuff mm -hmm. you just have to be smart enough and realize like come back to reality right. so we have to watch it and not only the games you have to watch even the obviously the predators on the internet and the games that are out there too you gotta watch all of that and it it really does boil down to a lot with the parents because you know, I know you love your parents, but I know you guys don't love us half the time when we take that video game away or the phone away, you know, but it's all for to protect our children. But then things like this happen when parents aren't paying attention. We're too busy working, you know, jobs, kids, taking care of the household. So, but why are these games, I like to ask you guys too, why are, uh, why are the mature games more exciting than like the e-games for everyone because actually in a lot of these times just like you go to the movies the g movies actually make way more money than the uh, r-rated movies and i think it's the same with the e-games they make more money than the r mature games so why are you guys more enticed to go for the mature shooting up game versus pac-man or mario karts that you're driving around banging in everyone because it's like it's fun you know, play Mario Kart, you know, throw you a little shell, knock somebody else's car, oh, I won the race and whatever. But it's like, every now and then, you want some action. You want something that's riveting, and then you also, everybody likes a good story. Like, mm -hmm. most action games have a very good story. Like, you play the Call of Duty series, Black Ops 3 has a very good story. Like, it it's all just depends on what you're looking for in the game. And... And if you're looking for a good story, most of the good stories are in the more mature games. Okay. I agree because, like, in Call of Duty, um, their storyline, it's mm -hmm. with the, I, I don't know what it's called, but it's just, like, with real actors acting mm -hmm. the storyline. Okay. So it's, like, really uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I feel like mature games make it more realistic so they can interest the audience more. And with just making it more realistic, it feels like that you're in the game and that other people can feel like, it's just, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just, that's one of the way I think. Okay. I want to add to her thing. 
mm -hmm. like with the storylines and stuff. Many people nowadays like crave things that are like sci-fi yeah. and like future stuff. And a lot of that really isn't like E, like some of it can be really dark. And mm -hmm. it's just a new generation is moving more towards like, you know, more sci-fi, more horror, stuff like that. Yeah, you actually it was reading my mind because I was getting ready to say, is, is it just the new generation now that we want that horror, they want that violence, the action. We're just not those passive people that we used to sit down on the couch and watch Barney. We can watch Barney with some nunchucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> but why are we needing more and more action? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why are we needing more and more action? So um, people came out of the force computer and they wanted something newer, something better, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with like video games, you know, you're always trying to top the next best thing and break records. Because if you think about it, everyone is just out there trying to make money, you know. And they have the best game, they can make the most money. So I think that's where they're trying to come at. But it's more action, more violence, more excitement. So is that just, are we just in that fast paced society now that we just need constant, constant action, go, 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 go. We need to constantly stimulate our brains and we're not quiet anymore. So the passive uh, Mario Kart isn't good enough. We need that feel like we're actually in a game or shooting or Call of Duty in a military thing or being um, nunchucks and fighting in like a Street Fighter game. We need that constant action. Uh, I feel like it's more like, uh, let's say that you usually go hang out with your friends or whatever, like y'all do y'all usual football, baseball, you mm -hmm. usual sports and whatever. And then one day you was like, hey, we gonna roll. We I wanna go on a roller coaster. So y'all go on a roller coaster, and you get that feeling. Mm -hmm. You get the same feeling from if you get if you get inside a really good action game, because mm -hmm. then you feel like you're there with them. So then you actually get that feeling, and it's just like you feel invigorated. I guess you can kind of say. You need the action. Yeah, you need the thrill. I should say, not really, not necessarily the action. So always in the action. Where does that lead to? And that's going like the violence with the video games. You're always needing that action. When is it going to come to the point that, well, this, I've had enough. I, I've shot enough people. This isn't feeling real enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to say it, but we had the shootings, yeah. the schools. Are these people at the point of, oh, it's not, I, don't, I need more of an action? You can definitely draw a line there. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. saying and regular people can draw a line, and I feel like they will. Because okay. everybody has someone that they love, you know, rather be sibling, uh, best friend, guardian, grandparents, mother, father, anybody. And for someone to jump into reality, I know that they would, they'd be like, well, what if this happened to them? Mm -hmm. And then I think from there, they, they would draw a line. Now, do you think that video games are also causing us not to even interact personally with people? Or you could go out and play football with your buddies, but no, let's go play a video game. And, and now I guess the video games, not that I'm that old, but um, you could be at your house, your friend could be at their house, and you guys could play the video games, even the Xbox One, and they're in different homes. Mm. So is that also affecting you guys to even interacting personally and actually saying hi to a friend versus mm. just hi on a computer screen or what your VR virtual reality glasses on? I feel like um, if it's like a new game, it's like, oh, I'm going to GameStop at 12 a.m. because my favorite new game is coming out. And you just and you just stay up the whole night, not even talking to your family or friends or not even eating dinner <laughs> because you're just playing this incredible new game that you waited for so long that you pre-ordered. And you just want to not talk to anyone because you're just really into your game. But uh, I'm assuming you guys don't do that for like homework. No. Oh, I gotta stay up for homework. <laughs> oh, we got this paper to write. I guess you don't do no. that. Is that the same, huh? No. <laughs> don't call the buddy up. Guess what? I got this new book by Scott Peterson, you know, for history. Gonna crack it open. No, you guys don't do that, huh? No. no. <laughs> so, have you noticed? I know, Eddie, you said that you've noticed some of your friends, like, even had to quit their job because they're so <laughs> obsessed with the game. Yeah. Okay. What type of game is that, that somebody would actually be that obsessed with? Games like Fortnite, like everybody's just 
trying to win in a sense, and even things like competitive games like in Call of Duty, like they were saying, mm -hmm. or um, I know like certain games hold tournaments across the world. Like people just want to be the best, you know, and they're even willing to quit their jobs to be like better than someone to do it. Okay. Well, I know uh, my son is actually working at a college, and they're trying to develop an eSport uh, team, which I was like, what on earth is an eSport team, son? But I guess they're actually making video games into a collegiate team. They actually have colleges that have teams of people playing video games. Yeah, yeah. video game actually became um, a sport in 2013. Uh, like one of the major video games um, that were uh, that was actually turned into a sport was League of Legends. P pretty sure you heard of it. Like mm -hmm. the ads are pretty much everywhere. Right. Yeah, so you can like play that. You can like championships for it. Like they even have, um, they even have like stadiums where people can just sit there and watch and watch them just go at it. See who has like the better tactics, the better skills, the better players. Yeah. So in a sense, we have the violence in the video games, and then on the other hand, we actually have that is actually doing some good. That people are actually getting scholarships to go to college <laughs> to play these video games. I mean. Have you guys even thought of that ever? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. was, I was just amazed at that, you know? And, but then, um, even with that, how does that even affect your psyche? You're going to college, and you're going to college to play video games. You think those people are more into, is that a career choice now that it's going to be a sports event? Yeah, definitely, like, Twitch streamers, and I remember, like, when I was younger, like almost every 14 year old boy and up like wanted to be in like phase or something. Mm. And it's just like, it's entertainment. Rather it's like an actual sport like basketball, baseball, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're still kind of getting that same kind of thrill. And that's what excites and drives people. And I think video games is you can do it till like you can't walk anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you could. Right. You could. Yeah. And that, well, I know they have, like, even for senior citizen home retirement homes, they have even the Wii games that are actually exercising parents and grandparents pretty much, you know? So give me some different, um, what do you guys really think about video games? I just want your personal opinion. You like it? You're for it? Long live video games? I feel like there could be, like, a use for video games. Like, they can be influential mm -hmm. to some at a point. But like sometimes they can get like really dark okay. and like they can send out a message to kids. But it is like it depends on like what you're aiming for. Like if you were aiming for something like more like happy, more like like you'd be like Mario, like or Sonic. But like if you were aiming like for something like shooting, like you'd be like Call of Duty, you'd be like guns or grenades. Okay. And I just feel like it it depends on what you're aiming for in the game. Okay. Mike, I personally like games. Uh, I find games is kind of like a way to kind of like escape reality for a bit and get a taste of what it would feel like to live a life that wasn't so realistic, a life that was more exciting or more thrilling than what I would normally live. And I also find it as a way for me to connect with my friends outside of um, school. Okay. I feel like video games are a very good thing because I, I grew up like playing them, you know. <laughs> like, can't tell you the countless hours spent on games like when I was younger, like Minecraft or Call of Duty and things like that. And they just like, I guess, distract you from. Okay. Things. Almost done. Last question real quick. I like video games. Um, okay. It's fun to connect with your family, like Just Dance, if you ever heard of that. Like, uh, you can dance by yourself or with your cousins or family, and then I just really like every one games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for um, my team panel. Thank you very much for your opinions on video games. I appreciate it. Um, audience, please come and um, see our show. We're on Wednesday nights, Homewood Channel 19 Comcast. Check us out on YouTube and also on Facebook. Thank you very much, and have a nice evening. Good night.